In this lesson, you'll learn how to store, display, and modify the settings for your Android apps. In addition to the settings page shown here in the API Guide section of the developer's website, there's also a settings design guide page to help you decide how to organize your settings. There's a link to it here. And we'll be focusing on the API Demos app code related to settings. Settings are values used to control various aspects of your app. Settings for an app are handled just like settings for your device. On the home screen of the emulator, if we click on the Settings app, we see the first level of the settings hierarchy for your device. So if we click on Display, we get the settings to control the look and feel of the display screen. And if we click on Brightness, we get a dialog screen for altering the brightness level. And your apps should always use the Preference APIs to manage its settings. And the terms settings and preferences are sort of synonymous. The term settings is more of a user external perspective and preferences is more of a developer internal term. This lesson on settings and the next on preferences are really addressing different aspects of the same topic. In the demo apps worksheet, there's a main group of preference demos that address settings and preferences. We'll look at the fragment demo here in line 163 that has a Java file name of Fragment Preferences. So let's fire it up in the emulator. We'll start up our API demos, click on Preference, and then Fragment. This display of app preference settings shows a variety of preference types, and we'll go over these in a minute. Let's take a look at the Java code. In the Preference folder, will open Fragment Preferences. In the onCreate method, in lines 36 and 37, the fragment defined below, Prefs Fragment, is displayed as the main content you see on the demo screen. And we'll leave the details of Fragments for that lesson. In line 41, the Prefs Fragment class is defined extending Preference Fragment. The Preference Fragment class shows a hierarchy of preference objects as lists, as we see on our app display screen. These preferences are automatically saved to shared preferences as the user interacts with them. So, for example, when I change this checkbox, the change is automatically updated in the app preference settings. So, the Android system is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in managing your preference settings. Also, the preferences shown follow the visual style of system preferences we looked at at the start of the lesson. So there's continuity between the look and feel of the preferences in your app with the system and other apps that also use the Preference Fragment class. In line 48, the preferences definitions are loaded from the Preferences XML file. Let's go to the XML folder and open the Preferences XML file. We have the Preferences XML file here. We'll double-click it to open it. So this is the code that defines the structure of your preference settings. Let's go through it and compare the XML code to what we see on the screen. In line 19, the Preference screen tag declares that this is a preferences layout. In lines 22 through 23, the preference category tag declares a category grouping and uses the title defined in the inline preferences string. And we see the inline preferences title showing here in our app display. The inline title means that we can change the values right here in the list, such as checking and unchecking the checkbox. In lines 25 through 28, a checkbox preference is defined using a unique key title and summary string that says this is a checkbox, as we see here. In lines 32 through 33, another preference category is defined as dialogue-based preferences. These require clicking them, such as the edit text preference, and then getting a dialogue screen for making a change, such as we have here my data. We could change that to something else. In lines 35 through 39, we have the definition of this edit text item that we just looked at. In lines 41 through 47, the list preference item is defined. Click the list preference, and you see a radio button list to choose from. We can change that. And notice the reference to a couple of arrays here. 
And let's open the arrays XML. And scroll down to entries list preferences. So here we have the string array entries list preference, and below it, entry values list preference. And these define this radio menu. In line 51, back in the preferences XML, there's another preference category defined launch preferences. In lines 57 through 62, a preference screen is defined that sends the user to a new fragment of preferences here. In lines 75 and 76, a preference screen sends the user to a web page here. Now, this is failing in the emulator, so I won't click it. I tried it on my phone and it works okay. So the failure seems to have something to do with the emulator implementation of this feature. In lines 85 through 96, a checkbox preference is defined with a child dependence that shows if the parent is clicked. So we see over here, if this is unclicked, the preference below it doesn't show or is grayed out. And if it's clicked, it does show. So that's our lesson on settings. In the next lesson on preferences, we'll continue to look at these capabilities.